God is still in congregation and mighty. He judges the most of the gods. Psalms 82 verse 1. God who stands in the congregation of the mighty, he judges amongst the gods. Did you know he's judged you perfect? And he's waiting for you to agree with him. Judge everybody else perfect. Oh, 
not think it's no evil, but it's not itself. Not the covers of all to do the sin. When you have a crush on somebody, they're absolutely perfect. Or you can do a sin about them, and if you in it, and if they do something wrong, you like you ignore it because love, love covers them. I love bleeds the best. Now every Christian is actually in fullness on the inside of spirit being. And if it's not manifesting, that means that they're deceived into thinking of themselves less than they are. So therefore we can have compassion and love them into the revelation. I see in here a room full of perfect people. See, the Bible says you should know the truth and the truth so. Now, we're, traditionally we're taught that we're not free. Repent. You're born free. See, you should know the truth and the truth should release you to be who you already are. You should know the truth, and the truth shall release the fullness of who he made you to be. You're not becoming you are. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. When? At birth. Newly created then. See, as you grow in life naturally, you find out you got more and more abilities when you grow up. You learn to walk, you learn to talk. You know, in the Hebrews it says, Are you not yet carnal? And walk his ways. And have not learned to talk yet. What's that mean? Haven't learned to talk yet? How about spiritually? My daddy has everything he says. I'm learning, I have to learn how to talk and have whatsoever I say. Each one of us. So we keep the enemies and stripes out and we learn how to speak, releasing the glory of God, clothing everything, now judging things righteous, judging things perfect. Now planet earth, when Adam and Eve fell out of the glory, the whole thing come out of sync with the glory. Jesus came, his main purpose in coming was to restore the glory. Christ to remove the sin, to take in, purge the conscience so the glory could come out again and flow through. Hey. <laughs> Tell anybody here. Remember you guys are Holy Ghost Rambos. Sharpshooters in the Holy Ghost. Clothing! Planet Earth and all your friends and brothers and sisters with the goodness of God. The glory of God by speaking life. Jesus said, my words, they are spirit and life. They say they are death, they are spirit, and they are life. I speak life. And we know it says in Ephesians, that no main communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that they minister grace to the hearers. Let me throw a fireball at you and peg you in the, in, in the fullness. <laughs> Let me lift up that gate of yours and, the, and peg it wide open. With Revelation! Revelation! No. So Paul's like, Lord, give the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of the eyes of their understanding, being enlightened, that they may come and know the hope of the call. Come fully. On, and that surpassing greatness of unlimited, immeasurable power in us and for us who believe. See, you're born a believer. Remember when you first got saved, it was easy to believe. Did you know that unbelief is a learned thing for a Christian? Because you're born believing. Then if you go hang around with the people that don't believe, then you... Yeah. 
I gotta get some more faith. It's natural to believe. Normal to believe. Have a drink. You're waking up to the fact you've already won every battle. Come on. As you walk after your spirit, see your spirit knows no defeat. Your spirit, being made in the image of God, has never lost anything. And never will. I've never said that before, but I like it. Your spirit knows no defeat. And never will. See, you are learning to lead your personality, your understanding into the perfect part of you. And therefore, death is swallowed up. Never separated from God again.
And Jesus says, hey, I should not live by outside things or by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And when you believe the word, it energizes you with his eternal life. And then you and I have an unction from the Holy One to eternalize everything that's in front of us by releasing the glory of God. By judging it righteous. See, if I judge it unrighteous, I put a cap on it. And if I judge it unrighteous, I lock up the bowels of compassion where the power is to fix it. But if I judge it righteous, I have an open gate to release the fire of God into the situation. So I'm not to be moved by what I see, but by what he says. See, Jesus came and judged the righteous because he didn't judge by the eye, but what he heard. Lepers stand before him, be not cleansed. The fire of God just went on. And all the darkness left. You know in a comic how you see a caption? And they write inside that caption the words? When the caption would come out of Jesus, the fire of God, <laughs> cleansed everybody within the distance. Because he spoke clean, be thou cleansed. So when something is unrighteous, be thou cleansed. Perfect. That will just release the ability to be perfect. See, God who calls us things that are not as only are. You and I have been built to call things that are not as only are. <laughs> and you're to call the things in your life that are not as only are. You're not to agree with the keys of the brother. You're to agree with God alone. Hallelujah. My daddy and I are one. You and the word are one. Come on, whatever. Come on, my God, whatever. <laughs> I thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ephesians 3 16. Grant them to be strengthened in the power of mind and out of the rich treasury of glory, the Holy Spirit indwelling their innermost being and personality. That Christ, the anointed one and his anointing may be permanently formed in your heart. I'm not talking about going in and out of the anointing anymore. I'm talking about coming to know the richest measure of his divine presence and remaining permanently in the richest measure of the divine presence. You and I being a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. See, we're looking to be fully possessed. With the abilities of God and God himself. He's like, I'm delegating you my abilities to change nations. And I'm going to give it to you unlimited and measurable. In the King James and John it says, For he whom God has sent has a spirit without measure. And when you walk in love, you get the anointing without measure. Now can you see yourself walking in love with an anointing to clean out every hospital. But just walking down the highway. And, you, and, and it's like Peter walked down the road, people just can't heal. Come on, whatever. Can you see a pillar of light, a pillar of fire walking down the street, everybody within. You know, I understand 
in Muncie, Indiana, I think it's Woodward Detter stood up and preached and people fell out 50 miles away. Yeah. Can you see walking down the road and people falling out? Go to the mall and I mean, you gotta bring catchers with you just to go to the mall. Everybody gets, you You take and go to the old folks home and everybody's youth gets renewed like an egg just because you walk through the place. I mean, he's able to do far above we can, what we can imagine or think. You know, we've settled for a little taste of the glory because we've had so little that when we've had really nothing, so when we get a little, we think we're something. And we settle for that level rather than pressing it under the fullness. Corinthians 5 16. First word, I don't know that after the flesh. In other words, I don't even know me after the flesh anymore because I haven't been there for. I mean, that's going to be your testimony. Then it goes on and says, even though we knew Christ after the flesh, we knew what it was like when he walked on earth. But now we know him as, hey, he who comes and visits in the meeting and lives within me. As a life giving spirit. You know, you're made in the image of him who is a life-giving spirit. So you are a life-giving spirit living in a, in a body. Now we are the sons of God. Now you are a life-giving spirit. And you're ready to give it all up. Paul's like, you know, I count all my own natural abilities, but don't. Because that's what they are in comparison to my spiritual abilities. Everything that I tr put my trust in, I had to turn and get my trust put in my spiritual abilities and drop my natural abilities. All of them. says the one aspiration that I, it's my predetermined purpose and unless you predetermine in your heart I'm gonna not back off until I have full release of what I of who I am. So you're not trying to get more you're looking to release what you got. You know the verse is given it's given unto you good measure pressed down checking together running over. Everybody sees that as finances. I'm talking about the anointing book. Give the anointing that's given unto you. Good measure! The releasing of the glory. Give the anointing that's given unto you. Good measure. Press down and shake it and running over. Who wants the anointing without measure? How about good measure? Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So God who stands in the congregation of the midst of you judges everything righteous, pure and holy, throws fireball at anything that's not alive and resurrects it from the dead. You, have, you are a life-giving spirit. You are called to raise every anything that's dead and bring it alive. How many saw the movie Matrix? How many saw the third one? Where he's walking. And every place his foot steps, light shoots forth. So that's Joshua. Every place your foot shall tread I've given you. Why? Because you release the glory into it. How many know that when he fully healed him? Light broke forth in, in him in that movie in the picture of a cross. It started. Oh my God. It exploded. And then when he went and won the battle, he saw everybody get lit up. The multitudes in the streets get, got filled with people full of light. This is your calling. See, when you win the battle of yielding your 
your bodies as living sacrifices to your spirit, you get authority over the planet. The only battle that you need to win is the yielding of your soul to your spirit, which neutralizes your flesh. This shirt has not been talking to me today. I'm serious. Your flesh is not to talk to you either. That's your shirt you're living in. This body is not me. I'm a spirit and I live in a body.
living in victory. That's reassuring. Because you learn how to dine at the banqueting table that makes you able to become stable. No more tossed to and fro, but in the heavenly flow and on the go. Because you know that you already won and you're having fun. in which circumstances or boxes have kept you. But if you eat right, you get to come out of the box. Because you stand up like Popeye did and blow away the problems. He ate his spinach. What are you eating? Whatever you consider, you become sensitive to, and that's when you reproduce in your life. If I'm plugged into the news every day, I have a level of unbelief in feeding unbelief in my life. Come out from amongst the world system, which is fear-based, and faith will arise. You are the planting of the Lord. You are like a field, and we're sowing seed, we're sowing 
the life of God. This, this thing is like dirt. Whatever I plant, I reap a harvest of. See, I just heard him say, are you ready for the fire of God to come and strike? But the reality is it's already here in strength. In you. See, this revival, this outpouring, this reformation, this clothing of all things with the glory is going to come out of you guys. Gideon's army, those that knew how to drink, got to go to the back. They were crazy enough to believe it. I'm going to take this lantern and this stick and I'm going to go up in the, in the enemy's camp and I'm going to make a whole bunch of noise. And we're going to take out over 100,000 people with three of us. Maybe with 300 of us. Stood up and slew themselves. See, this evil will always destroy itself. Come on. Come on, Hey! Yeah. And you don't want to be in the midst of that. Because it always takes itself out. Come on. You are the righteousness of God. Come on. Now. Oh, you're in full spiritual stature. You were made full. And you're going to reach it by fully getting your mind renewed. To the washing of the water of the word. That's why I can say I'm, I'm here to brainwash you. And we're called the brainwash everybody around us. Picture Jesus showed up to the Apostle Paul as a bright light. Now they brighter than the noonday sun. Now let's take that word down to the level of a ball of light right here in my hand. Just about like this. Bright light, my hands on fire right now. Hey. Come on. See, you're called to speak with that light. And the container of light comes up out of your mouth and goes and flows whatever you speak to. I did a day meeting up in Ely, Minnesota back in the 90s. And 
the glory kind of stuff strong, you know, it was raining that day, and people would fall outside the tent. And he'd get rained on and not get up. Needed better catchers that day. Hey! And I blew my truck up on the way home. You know, that's like $2,500 to a $4,000 date. And you coast to the side of the road, get out, try to start it again, you it's a bad bathroom noise going on. Got out of the truck, walked around in front of it, opened the hood up, and I think this is it. Yeah. 